Today we're going to take out the sum on an ideal logic. This is the same process for all versions of the logic. This is for engineers use only, not for DIY. And we're going to be doing this without draining down the heat exchanger. This isn't necessarily the manufacturer's approved method of doing this. Having done the initial safety checks, isolate the gas and the electricity. I'm going to take off the inspection cover on the um, front of the sump there. This is usually where it uh, leaks from, just above that, where those screws are. Lift off this turret and swing it to the left and pull it down and away. Take off the little connection pipe from the trap. Taking out the trap, uh, you just swing it back and lifts out. Some versions though, they have a, a connection underneath which has to be unscrewed. We'll have a bucket underneath it, otherwise you'll end up with wet trousers. Next we're going to unscrew the fan. 8mm socket there. Expensive one from Home Bargains that one. Just undo the long bolt that holds the fan in place. Unplug the electrical connectors on the fan. This one you have to squeeze together to pull it out. And take off the earth clip and the plug off the gas valve. Disconnect the gas valve. This one's held on with a, uh, a lock nut. <clears throat> Some of them uh, held on with a, a screw underneath through the plate. Depends which version of the logic you've got. This is where the screw is on the other version. Then lift the whole section out together, the fan and the gas valve together, and put them safely to one side. Next we need to get this plate out of the way. So undo the two screws. And what I do, rather than disconnect all the electrodes and the uh, power supply to the igniter, just lift the whole plate up and put uh, the screw in in a higher position so it's just out of the way. Then slacken off the two bolts that hold the heat exchanger in place. Don't take them right out, just slacken them off. Make sure you've got the right sump. Um, some of them have the outlet underneath and some have the outlet at the side. To get the sump off, we need to undo these clips. At the First of all, undo them from the front. They're just clipped on, so we need to spring them out doesn't matter if you break the old sump off because you're getting rid of that anyway. And spring it down. And then we're going to try and get the back to give way. So that might be a case of snapping those off or, or pushing the sump to one side so they slip off. Just be careful not to damage the heat exchange. It is quite tough, but you might need to get a bit rough with the sump. There we go, that's popped off. Remove the old sump and the gasket that was on the heat exchanger. Have a feel around, make sure there's nothing left on the thing. And then uh, make sure on the new one, the gasket's in place. And it's a case of pushing it up into place. And the little hooks will hook on onto the uh, heat exchanger. Do that by pushing up from underneath and clipping it on. And if you feel round, there'll be a gap between the two if it's not clipped on. Make sure it's on at the back as well. Have a good feel round. Make sure everything's nice and tightly up in place. Tighten up the two screws on the heat exchanger. Drop the 
gas valve housing bracket back into place and put the two screws back in. Now the fan is held in, it's got these two little slots and they fit onto these two spigots at the top. I've, I've been to boilers where the fan's been just been screwed up without this hooking on. So if you hook it on, you should be able to pull on it without, you know, before it's screwed on. That'll tell you it's in the right place. And then you can put the elongated bolt back in. If you've got the gas valve that has the screw in, put the screw in underneath. Or put the locking nut in if it's the model like this one. This is the same process whether it's the heat only or the system or the combi. The only difference is the outlet on the sub might be in a different position. Put the new washer on the gas pipe there that came in the pack. Tighten that up. Plug your fan connections back in. And your gas valve connections, not forgetting the F tag. Now these rubbers where the uh, trap sits on it. I've been to them where these have been pushed down and trapped. You need to make sure it goes on the outside, you know, fits nicely round the outside of the outlet of this trap. And then lock it back into place. Put the cap back on underneath if uh, your version is the one with the screw on cap underneath. These hoses have two different ends. One's like a hermaphrodite end, if you're allowed to say that these days. I don't think boilers get offended. And a female end. So the hermaphrodite, hermaphrodite end goes onto the the um, the trap itself, whereas the female end goes onto the sump at the top. At the top, it's the same whether it comes out the side or the bottom, like this one does. To make sure the um, yeah, you need to fill the, the trap up, and if you're more careful than I'm being here, it'll also prove that the trap connection's right, the hose isn't leaking underneath. So it's worth doing to make sure that hose is in in place underneath properly. Or you could just slop it about the place like I've done here. The difficulty we're trying to do a job with just one hand and holding the holding the phone. Make sure your your seals are in place on the turret here. Lift it up and then slide it in from the left and then back down into your new sump at the bottom, making sure that that seals in as well. And I'm going to put the two screws back on. You get a new cover plate normally with the sump. Make sure the rubber's in the seal there and screw that in place. Then we can turn the gas on, do our safety checks, your COs, CO2s and all that. You make sure you do your tightness test, do your electrical safety checks, all that kind of thing. Checks the tire pressure on your car and you're ready to go.